Hello, good afternoon. Hope everyone's well. Gonna start off by doing our usual checks. Check everything's working fine. Um, but I'm gonna start carving straight away whilst I'm doing those checks. So let's just have a little look on there. Check yep, that's working fine. So, yeah, we're back to doing some love spoons on the bench. Um, this one here, we've got a few different symbols. Our, uh, a lot of emblems. So we've got a, a dragon, Welsh emblem of course. A thistle at the top and a rose. So emblems for Wales, Scotland and also uh, England or as I found out recently from doing that big spoon for America as well. Um, starting off with the dragon, why do we start off with the dragon? probably the most intricate carving, the one that we got the most work to do, so we may as well start with the uh, the most intricate carving. That's generally what we're doing. And the wood that we're working in, it's a piece of oak, and we use all sorts of different woods, as you many of you will know, for carving in. It's a piece of reclaimed oak from an old piece of furniture, and it had to be marked out quite carefully because the piece of furniture we were using, it was made up of all sorts of uh, bits of oak that had been joined together. So we had to make sure that where we marked out the spoon, there were no joins. We find that because it's reclaimed from furniture, they were quite skilled when it comes to putting together the furniture. The people sticking together, the different people, the, 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 sorry, the different pieces, they were very skilled at doing that process and they do a fantastic job of concealing the joins. So you have to be careful with furniture when you're marking out because it's very easy to mark out and have the two, um, yeah, two pieces of wood stuck together and you're halfway through your carving and you've got a bit of a problem. Hello to the carver. Good to have you with us. And Stephen's 8x6 workshop. Great to have you both with us. Um, the one and a half hour tea break will be coming, we'll have it on Monday afternoon. Good, good. Hope you're enjoying it. We're really grateful that you, uh, you've joined us. Uh, mind you, it's really cold in my workshop. Yeah, it's cold in here. Um, we've noticed that. Me and Dad were discussing that. Where we are in our, our workshop, the, the main part of the workshop has got insulation and, um, the, the, the workshop bit where we're working in, it hasn't actually got insulation in the roof above us. So I mentioned that to him. He said perhaps it's time for us to consider starting to get, get some insulation. But we're very fortunate here because we're right on the, uh, the west of Wales. We're on the southwest coast. It's quite mild where we are, so we rarely get any snow here. But a definite change in the temperatures. So, onto our carving. We marked it out with that vertical grain, and we're just going through the process of getting the depth on our carving. And I would say, at the moment, excuse me, the carving that I end up doing the most of is probably the dragon. So, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a carving that is a regular feature, and so it's... It's become very much second nature, doing all the little bits of detail, all the markings, that sort of thing. I'll have to have a look through all of my videos and try and figure out how many spoons, bespoke love spoons, I do every year, including the dragon. But it's definitely uh, seems to be going up and up each year. And then that's something you will find then, anybody who is learning carving, um, yeah, the more times you do a carving, the more you can refine it, the faster you become at doing the carving, and uh, yeah, the more straightforward it becomes. So, we're just working on the different angles, the different stop cuts that will make up the basis of a lot of this carving. So we're marking out where that wing, that top wing is gonna go. We'll also then mark out for the tail, done a little bit of depth as well on the, uh, the head of the carving. Tap. That's three taps on there. I just think as well. Um, oh, hello, Tommy. Good to have you with us as well. Uh, 
hope all is well. Good, good. Oh, it's good to have uh, it's good to have everyone with us at the start of the live stream. This one here, as we mentioned, this has been taken from some old furniture, and I will double check it with Dad because I think I know the piece of furniture that it's come from, and that piece of furniture is going to become the focus of a YouTube channel. So what it is, we've always bought up a lot of old furniture, something we've talked about many times, and we then use that wood for making the uh, different projects, different love spoons, all sorts of different things from. We're going to actually try and work out how, um, how much then we can earn from a single piece of furniture. So the piece of furniture itself was bought for £65. And then we're going to try and work out from there how much we can turn our £65 investment into. So just to give everyone an idea, because for ourselves, that's mainly the cost of the different projects and the time that we spend working on them. One thing we noticed this week, um, yeah, it seems that People's attention is turning on to um, Christmas. Keep them busy with carving presents on yourself. Yeah, we, we're starting to notice that people's attention is, is turning on to Christmas. I wonder, this is where we need a little bit of an insight from um, from the carver, possibly, being, uh, being the other side, as is put, the other side of the pond. Uh, is it because you just had Thanksgiving? Is that the reason for... Uh, more more focus going on to I know we're getting closer to Christmas, but it seems in the last couple of days that seems to be where people's attention is is going on to. We're we're having people asking more and more for Christmas themed ideas and Christmas presents, that sort of thing. But just just interested to know because um, of course over here we're having in more recent years. They started doing these, these Black Friday sales, and it doesn't really mean much to, to us. And I'm just wondering, is that is that due to the um, is that due to Thanksgiving? Is that normal in in the US? Do you have sales then? Be interested to know. Well, Stephen's been making a uh, a video. Sounds great. It's been doing my head in. Oh dear, that doesn't sound so great. Oh, the the fun and games it can be doing a video. We know it. We know it very well. We we understand your pain, there, Stephen. You start off with a fantastic idea and think, "Oh, this is going to be great," and then it starts to starts to take longer than you're expecting. Then you got to you find the editing takes longer. Then something goes wrong with the project, and it goes from there. Certainly does test your patience from time to time, but it's a it's a fun process and it's fun to be able to share with everybody what we're what we're doing and what you're doing. You may notice as well here, can you see we've um, done a few little cuts on there. Reason for that, it's got the date on it. I didn't want to give the date away because I thought there is a chance that um, it may give away for the couple who, who it's for. So uh, yeah, we covered that one up. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving is when Christmas sales begin. There we are. So yeah, we're getting used to... Um, we're getting used to that one in the, in the UK because for ourselves, and uh, I'll put this across to Tommy and Stephen as well because uh, you may have different ideas on this, but for ourselves, it was always the Boxing Day sales. So the day after Christmas was when we we would have the sales here, but now we have this um, uh, these new 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 sort of uh, sales, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, we do your best to keep your spouse from decorating until after Thanksgiving, ah. So that's when it all sort of uh, gets going. It's great for us though, learning about, you know, the different festivals, different ideas and things like that. Got me thinking, I'm gonna have to do, uh, we'll have to do a, a video. Have to do some scroll saw, some Thanksgiving themed scroll saw projects. So I'll ask the carver again, what sort of things are typical for Thanksgiving? Is it, is it the turkey, is that the, the the big the big one. Any other symbols associated with the uh, with Thanksgiving? Be good to know. We'll uh, we'll do a, a Thanksgiving themed scroll saw video for next year. Yeah, I'm also interested now. 
Stephen's, um, the carver's asking there, Stephen, a, a little bit about the video. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that one too. Some great, great fun you've had with uh, different video projects. So I'm sure that'll be great entertainment. Although, yeah, the editing process, the video in, takes a time. So you can see, we're just getting that depth. Don't want to go too deep, because we're going to have to match that up on the other side. So it's just a little bit of a Celtic twist that we got on there. And then we're going to do a little bit of rounding off. Afterwards, then we'll sand everything down. I've just had to uh, had to take off the uh, one of the old belts from our belt sander, because I've run out of sandpaper for doing the, um, the hand sanding. But one issue I'm having is there's like a black... How can I put it? Like a black film on the back of it. And unfortunately it comes off in your hands. And then that can come off in the hand sanding. So we're looking now. Dan's going to try with white spirit. See if we can tidy the back of those belts up. And get rid of whatever is on them. Because it's uh, making work for us. It's that problem we had before with the with the, using the belts. You see, we're just shaping everything down the bottom of the spoon. The back of the bowl as well, we'll have to go back on our belt sander just to sand that a little bit more smooth. And of course we have to, um, we'll have to uh, take any of the paper that's left over after the carving, that'll have to come off as well. So let's have a little look here. I think it's time to turn it round in the vise. Well, let's look. It went live on Friday. The needle. Ah, oh, we missed that one. Well, I'll have to have a look. I'll have to have a look on your channel. I didn't. I put in for. I put in on your channel for subscribe and ring the bell. So I've missed that one. I'll have to have a little look. I'll have to have a look through your channel. I should have had a notification about that. Um. Oh, when when we finish here, we'll we'll have a little look at that one. Looking forward to that. Wonder why I didn't get a notification. There we are. Hmm, strange. We will have to check that one out. Looking forward to seeing it. So we're just turning it round in the vise and we start carving everything back the other way. This one, we I think we're gonna keep, yeah, keep concentrating on the dragon. Don't jump about too much. So we've got that back wing. We're just pushing that down a little bit. And um, one thing I will do later on in the uh, demonstration, we will bring in um, our spoon for this year. So I've had a, the last seven days have been rather busy. We're very much um, catching, catching up on everything. It's amazing how, despite the fact that we, we haven't been sort of particularly busy, everything so, sort of just piles up and we've had lots of different projects that we're trying to get through. There's one here. I will just slide it down in front. This is one that we're gonna be working on. Um, it's a military uh, theme with this one here. Excuse me, and it's massive. So we scroll sawed all of that. That's ready for carving. Um, as I said, I've done the spoon for the year and uh, we're gonna have to do some work on that. And then also, um, it's sort of, it's probably the metal burnish from the bed. Better, yeah, you're spot on. It is that. It is indeed. Turkey's Native American pilgrims. Right, so there we are. That sounds like a that sounds like a theme and an idea. Um so yeah, the um yeah, that is an interesting point. Any thoughts on it? We were gonna try some white spirits to try and take off the that from the back of the uh, the sanding belts. That was our uh, little idea, but we'll find something to sort of tidy them up, because otherwise it just makes extra work for us <sighs> trying to clean everything up. So yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, no, there we go. The carver said he didn't get a notice either. Um, I am thinking we'll do one turkey themed project, something pilgrims, hmm, and then the Native Americans, I, I think I quite, I quite like the idea of 
doing some carving with um, Native American themes. That'll be something different for us. I did see one. Um, I've seen some different ones where there, there's a scroll saw project where they do it. They do they do a um, cutting out a Native American. Nice nice idea. Quite effective. But I always like to do something a little bit different. So we'll have to we'll sit down and draw something out and think of an idea that would uh, fit in, or a few different ideas. We've been making again, we've been doing some different projects, um, like on the coronet saw. What was the one that I was working on? We had, yeah, almost like a little, a mini version of a letter rack. Uh, we've done a modified version of a candle holder. And what was the third one I did? Oh, like um, a little stand for putting a notepad on. I think that's sort of, a little bit of a mantra of what we do is if you can turn whatever the project is you're working on if you can turn it into a an actual product i always think it gives it a bit of additional appeal so that's what we always try to work on is having it as uh, yeah a little bit of a product so you see we're angling down this piece this piece here as well will actually have the the date of the wedding so we're not uh, we're not going to put that on quite yet because it's in the future and um, with COVID and everything that's happening, um, yeah, we won't be uh, anticipating anything too soon because who knows when they're going to decide to stop us doing things. So we don't, we've had a few love spoons come back where weddings have been cancelled for different rules and regs and so uh, we'll wait until closer to the date as opposed to having to carve the uh, the engraving out so we're just dropping the depth down on on the the subject of the wood as well this is proving to be a beautiful piece of timber to, to carve we bought quite a, a large quantity of local oak and it will be good for some of the projects but it won't it, it, it won't it's not as it's not as straightforward it's not as nice to carve as this so that's why we're saving some of the wood for our bespoke spoons because it's well makes life a bit easier doesn't it oh seeding version in with an acrylic spray ah nice yeah nice nice idea shame to waste the belts if there's still some light exactly not got his blood in you there. Oh, we're always looking for a money saver. Yeah, no, it's um, that is something that we've uh, instead of buying sandpapers, we always recycle them. See, oh, we get we get the we get the absolute maximum from them. So we buy the belt, use it on the belt sander, wait until they're wearing out, and then we use them for hand sanding. It's done us proud. What it was, I, I noticed that we were buying. We were buying sandpapers, and a lot of the sandpapers they don't last. They don't last two minutes. So I'm thinking, well, this is ridiculous. Um, so I thought, well, what's the solution to us buying these this sandpaper all the time? And I thought, well, the belt sander belts they last ages. And I thought, let's have a little go. Let's try and use one of those. See if they're any good for the hand sanding. And it worked. And I never never used a. I never bought a piece of sandpaper. In that way, again, the only ones that we buy, um, there we are, that's what I got left over of old stuff. The only stuff that I buy is this one here, um, and that is for the actual finishing. So when we're shellacking, rubbing it down in between each coat, we put a little bit of, uh, we use a little bit of that just to take where that shellac, um, where you get that little bit of roughness on the finish from the shellac, you just take it off using that sandpaper. So you can see we're just shaping everything, dropping the levels down. We've got to make sure that we drop the level well on everything because um, afterwards, of course, we put it back on the belt sander. So you have to have a little bit of depth on there. We're also then going to push this piece back, just like so. Yeah, that's coming along. And 
I'm going to try and get this bottom section completed before we go on to the top section of the love spoon. One thing we notice as well is um, as, a, as a family workshop, we're always evolving, changing, doing different things. And we're actually noticing that we're getting less and less in terms of um, our focus being on the love spoon. And we're going back to where we used to be called in wood craft carving. So it's because we work in wood. And now we're finding that we're going back to our roots and making more of the, the style of items that we used to make because, um, yeah, that's where we seem to be getting most interest. Oh, that's the fire. Something spitting on the fire there. So, yeah, we, um, um, we used to be, when Dad started off, if you wanted a love spoon, you'd have to come and work on your own. But health and safety made that impossible. So in the mid-90s, more of our focus was on the love spoon. And then we became known as the Love Spoon Workshop. And so uh, we, we've always had a lot of groups in that sort of thing. Well, since COVID, what we're finding is we're coming back full circle and more of our time is being dedicated to making other items. So to give you an idea, on social media, we put up last week the Robin. Um, that was a... No, I think it was two weeks ago, sorry, we put up the Robin. That generated a little bit of interest but it was still a love spoon and then the last week we put up some of the different Christmas decorations that we've made and they were generating quite a bit of interest so we're finding now that that's the line we're going down once more is making other items as opposed to um, just the love spoons which is it's fun in a way because as you well know we enjoy working with the love spoon it's a lovely tradition, lovely material, and a lovely process, but it's also fun making other things. So we're getting a bit more, a bit more variety to what we're doing. Right, so I'm gonna finish off this surround. So we've got that heart shape, the suggestion of a heart shape into a twist. This is well, this particular one is it's a nice one for me to do because this one's actually been designed by dad. So it was designed back in the summer when I was away visiting Yully's family. And he designed this when the people came in. So don't get the chance to um, carve. Dad doesn't do a lot of designing now, so it's nice to carve one of his, one of his designs. Lovely design. And it's uh, the style of the design is slightly different to my own. So it's nice to do something slightly, uh, slightly different. You can tell as well from the, the drawing style. Dad tends to draw a little bit more freehand than myself, as I tend to use a lot of symmetry, although dad uses the symmetry. Just, he just draws in a slightly different style. Same as his carving. Carves things in a different style as well. So you can see we're just getting the depth on our surround, so just getting it a little bit deeper into the woods, and then we're just going to come around the outside, just to bevel the edge, and then afterwards we will use our we will use our sandpaper to shape everything. It's good to be flexible, at least. That's absolutely right. <laughs> the oak looks gorgeous, nice great. Yeah, almost good enough to, yeah, spot on. It's a fantastic piece of wood, this one. I'm not sure about trying to eat it. Never had a go at that, although we've had a few uh, splinters that can fly up and I have, I have, I, I, will, ad I will admit that uh, over the years, I have accidentally, uh, Tasted a few pieces of wood where they fly in my drink and things like that. That has happened on a more than once. Not a lot of taste to it, in fairness. So you see, we're just getting that surround and we're getting our shape on our dragon coming through. So we're getting that depth. Once we've got everything, see, down to the right depth, then we can turn our attention to getting all of the bits of detail into it. So again, we're just dropping that tail down. 
And it's great, project like this, if you've got a nice piece of wood, you just fly through it. Really does carve nicely. I think we go for this gouge here, the reason for that, it's a little bit longer, so it can carve those pieces just a little bit more easily. And shape. Get a little bit of shape on that one there as well. That's coming along. And again in there. And we're, yeah. It's starting to come along. One thing as well, when I'm carving the, uh, the feet and the claws of the dragon, I always go a little bit more carefully, a little bit more steadily, because it's easy to damage those ones. Again, afterwards, we'll add a little bit of detail, but I always suggest going a little bit carefully on those. And one thing, when you're scroll sawing, don't go too fine, because if you scroll saw it really fine, it you can end up where you're carving it, those feet will just splinter away. So that's always, make sure you basically, what I'm saying is leave enough wood there so it's got the strength when you go to carve it. And on that note, Thomas the Woodcarver's just walked in. Oh boys. Come on down, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's all happening. I can see Yelly's going to pick up the, the boys as well. So it's all happening at the same time here. Yeah. I was thinking as well, did um, I've got the spoon that we've done for this year. Yep. Should we, we could bring that one in, put a coat of shellac on it, I'm thinking. A coat of shellac on it? I think so. Okay. So everybody can see our, our thoughts for this year. So you'll see, we're just dropping these bits, getting that, it's a method we use where we get the level that we want on everything before putting the detail on, just saves you carving it twice. If it's a carving you're not sure about, then it can be a good idea to get your markings on there first, but as I mentioned, we're carving dragons with quite a, quite a, a regular frequency so we get used to carving them what would you say did i would say that the dragon that's probably one of the symbols we carve the most didn't it probably yes it's just as well we enjoy yeah. carving eh? you know there's sort of different styles that we do as well yeah we do two different styles mainly yeah. isn't it although we've done a number I think of you call that one the ten dragon you? yeah we refer to this as the the full pen dragon i refer to it as because it's it's basically the one that comes off the the flag. The only problem with it is that there is a lot of detail to it. Um, and so, um, yeah, basically, it takes a little bit of time to carve. So some of the other ones that we do are slightly stylized, simpler versions. I mean, our own logo is a version of the dragon, isn't it? Yeah. But we've... Um, it incorporates an oak leaf, so you get what we do in with um, in with that dragon symbol. We're always at different times a bit reluctant, you know, doing dragons because you have the idea of fear and things like that. But the dragon so symbolizes, um, yeah, that's a template of a simpler dragon that we do. Um, the dragon can symbolize fear, but it also symbolizes protection. So it's a yeah, good symbol and one that we enjoy using. So I think we've just about got the depth. You'll have to excuse me carving towards myself there a little bit. Now this bit here as well, perhaps as well, yeah, I'm just gonna carve that down just like so. So I think... Interesting one as well, of course, for the dragon. Yeah. Well, you've got George and the dragon. Yes. <laughs> so. I mean, it's an English-Welsh thing, isn't it? Well, do you know, there's an interesting... Um, where I noticed, because um, Catalonia, it's St. George there. I think it's Jorge, isn't it, in Spanish? Right. Um, no, it's San Juan, sorry. Juan. Um, but again, if you look, they've they got a, cross, a red cross. They've got a red cross as they, they use as a symbol. 
Right. In Catalonia, yes. so there's yeah, I don't know what the background is with that. But yes, you have got that. You've got George and the Dragon. So what we're doing then, we're just dropping that level. We've dropped it down to the level that we want. So we got that part of the um Prananda. Thank you for joining us, Aubrey. Great to have you with us as always. Uh, we're just dropping that level of the dragon. We've dropped that down to the level that we want. And then afterwards, we put all of the detail. So far, yeah, this piece of oak, beautiful to carve. I'm going to see if I've got a different... There's not a lot of life left in that piece of sandpaper I was using. And again, Dad would say, you know, explain why you're not using a block. Because you've got that all shaped, all those different contours... Um, yeah, if you're using a block, the block just goes over the top and it doesn't actually shape and sand anything. So that's why we, uh, we stick to, uh, using, using the, uh, the sandpaper in our hand, as you can see. So once we've rounded everything off and we've got the finish that we're looking for, not far off, I think it'll do for now. We start adding our detail. So the first thing I start with, we put a little full stop for the nose. And then we get the eye on there. So to add that detail, we just curve the gouge the one way, curve the gouge the other way, use that stop cut, cutting in like so. And then a bit more depth at the front of the eye. So get right into clean out any little bits of wood that are left over. We have our fantastic little micro gouge, and that can be used to finish off the eye. Um, we then use a straight, there's a little bit of detail on the dragon, just in by its ear. So we just put a little, almost like a little lightning strike, like so. Well, before we and put then, the shellac on it, I, I just noticed something on there. Okay. What, what have you noticed? So we're going to do a little bit of detail in around there. What have you noticed? Is, is that line there? What line? Thin? It's fine. Right, so we're going to do some detail on the... Um, to, to separate slightly the uh, well, this, this the front is a, this claw. Is a matter of opinion, though. We have a dispute here. No, we haven't got a dispute. Yeah. I've done. I've I've carved the spoon. We've we've we finished it off. If you want to change no, the line, we'll put change it. it we'll honestly. Put it to the audience. No, 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 no. Anything I said to him. I said when he wants to fiddle around with the spoon, you can let him fiddle around with the spoon. It's fine. I know. I know what you're going to do with it. It's fine. Do do, do what you want to do. On that, that one there. It would be good for people to see this and to see what they think. No, I'll do it. That's fine. No, I know, but it would be good for other people. Yeah, to, yeah. To give an opinion. Just right. To see, for, for, you know what I mean? So you just... Um, this is what this is all about, isn't it? This is to help people and, uh, you know... So we, we're adding a little bit of detail to the front. We just add in some those little stop cuts into into the edges, just like so, and we're going all on the front of the the dragon there, just to add the extra little bits. So as we go in, there we are. So you've got all those little bits of detail down the front of there, and afterwards. We're going to do the detail on the wing, just like so. And there we are. And yeah, it's basically we've got the level that we want, and then we'll add the detail as we're going along. So we're making sure. Um, what have I done with that gouge? That one there. So we're using that gouge just to, it's just a larger one, so it goes into that edge. And again, so we're using the 
bigger gouge for this one here because we've got enough room to fill in on that wing. There we are. And same again. So we will use this one for as far as we can and then we'll have to swap over back to the smaller gouge. So we're going to do all of the stop cuts. We'll also need to come down the front here. We've got the claws that needs working on as well. Just like so. And we're going to work into... There we are. Just working into that. I've just noticed that from the carver. Indeed, no scripts here. You, we'll show you the spoon, and I know the bit that he's going to change change on that one. It's to do with the uh, the the neck of the spoon. So it's going to have uh, it's going to have a Thomas the Wood Carver revamp. But the main thing in there, we'll show you the shellacking and we'll show you how um basically how we've recorded 2021 so you're working into the stop cuts just add in a little bit of extra detail just like so there we go and same again we're adding all the way through little bits of detail so when you shellac it this will all come out right same again and again and then afterwards we'll do a little bit of detail on the uh, claws and the nice thing then once you've got the dragon done that's a lot of the um that's a lot of the time and the work that we're looking to spend on this project because a lot of the other ones the rose will take us a little bit of time but it's the biggest it's the biggest carving now the back claw we know we've got the strength and the the bottom front claw we know we've got the strength because they're connected solidly to the um the wood these higher ones those are the ones i was referring to before where you have to go a little bit more carefully because um, they they basically have to um, those ones have to um, have to be ever so slightly more careful because they are very delicate. So that's why they're the easiest parts on this particular design to break. So we go very delicately, and that is why we leave you need a certain amount of strength. That one there I think is connected, so not as vulnerable. And the middle one then, it is it is vulnerable. There we are. So we've got a little bit that we're gonna bring that down into. There we are, just like so. There we go. And the same with the front two, because they are free from the they're not connected. So ideally, see, what we would do is to connect those feet, those claws, we would connect it to um, the outline and that would give it the extra strength. So we've got those parts done there. Yeah, just like so. Oh, I'll tell you what we haven't done. We've got to do this one here. This one, not as delicate as the bottom of them. Uh, it, must be, it must be difficult for it indeed. Do you add scales to the dragon? We do indeed. The ice cream cakes is either baked or Alaska. So we, what we'll do is the, um, yeah, in terms of adding scales, we'll go all around there. So there's all the different little bits of detail as we go in through. So we're just going to get a little bit. And these ones, as I said, they're not as delicate for breaking because it's vertical grain. This one here, You've got to go that much more carefully with it because it's horizontal grain. So you just have to add a little bit more caution to what you're doing because um, there we go. Yeah, just like so. That's it. So we've just got a little bit more depth onto that one there. 
These ones where we've gone at the front, they'll need a little bit of just working into that stock cut, just like so. And we can drop this part down as well, just a little bit. So the next part of it is to come across the front. So the front of the uh, the body, the, the bottom of the dragon's body. And to add little bits of detail. Just like so. And we will also, um, we want this, the body sort of going behind the front wing. So the way I create that effect is where we've done that initial line. We can drop that back down into the woods. So it looks, creates that effect as if, um, as if it's go, going behind that front wing. That's the, uh, that's the impression that we're looking for. There we are. So we're just going in behind just like so. There we go. And then to finish off our dragon, we are going to do little pieces of detail on the legs and the rest of the body. So it's to create that effect, as you mentioned, like scales. Um, oh, I would think the wood grain alone would potentially give the impression of scales since the dragon are that small. Yeah, it, it's, um, th th this one here is creating that sort of impression of it. Basically, as I'm sitting here, I've got the pen dragon um, on a flag about a meter away from me. So we're taking that detail that is on it and trying to recreate it. But you've always got that little bit of artistic license. There's different ways that you can go about doing that. And we have sort of a, we have a specific method we use for that. There we are. So we got that one there. And despite the fact that I carve quite a few of these, it never ceases to amaze me how long it does actually take to carve it. And this is where it becomes difficult then, see, with a um, with a, a bespoke request, because you are you're constantly working out how um, how much that's going to take you in terms of time and it's always difficult difficult to estimate we're nearly there though right so i'm going to do a little bit more just do beverly edge around that heart that the dragon is within there we go And it's just working on that back leg. There's a little bit of a potential for that to splinter. So we just carve it back the other way. And we're gonna go all the way down this back leg then. And uh, create that Im impression similar to the Welsh Dragon. This piece of wood, yeah, pleased with this piece of wood, worked really nicely. And uh, that piece of furniture, it certainly, I think, is going to end up paying, paying for itself over and over again. And the quality of the wood that they would use for making the different furniture, it really is, um, yeah, top-notch stuff. There we go. I think that is all of our detail on our dragon. And now we are ready to move on to the other parts of the spoon. Let's have a little look. 
There we are. So we've just gone round the outsides. There we are. And again, finish that little piece off just like so. Right, so we go on to the top half of the love spoon now. So we're just going to work on the bells, so that's the next part of it. So the first thing that we work on on the bells are the clappers. And there we are. So we just get the depth that we're looking for on those. And then afterwards we will shape the you shape them round. So let's have a little look. Right, so we're gonna have to have slightly bigger gouge for doing the top of those. Just like so. So we're just getting around the top of the bells. Just like so. There we are. And then there's a little bit of extra paper on those where they've been sellotaped off. I don't want what it is. Where, the, where there's a bit of sellotape, always a bit dubious of carving on top of sellotape because the gouge can slip and cause you problems. So we don't want to do that. And um, yeah, so we're just going to work into the outside of the, the bells to start off. Okay, yeah, that's fine. There we are, that's great. Thank you for that. So we're just shaping those bells just like so. And the same on the other side. So whatever we do on the one side, we match it up on the other side. Just like so. There we go. So we just get that depth that we want to, match it up on the other side, and then we're gonna do we're gonna do the insides of the bells. So basically when it comes to carving this one here, we're working our way from bottom to the top. That's Thomas the Woodcarver, he's just heading up to the post office. We've got a few different requests on the back of, as we mentioned, a few of the different um, decorations, that sort of thing. So nice to be doing a few different things and hopefully it'll take us on to um, new, new different ideas, different designs and being able to, um, yeah, make different things. So we're just going to have, we start off, see, by getting the two sides. Always find with the bells, it's always a little bit of a, a difficult one to know. Sometimes you're better off carving in that direction, sometimes in the opposite direction. You're just trying to read the direction that that grain is running in. So that's what you're trying to do on there. So a little bit more just into the centre just to shape it. Just like so. Same again. There we are. So now with the clappers, what we're gonna do is to actually shape them. So we've got a basic shape for the, the belt. And then to shape the clapper, we carve in the one direction, we then carve in the opposite direction just like so and same again on the other side there we are and what we'll have to do is to turn it round turn it round in the vise and then carve the bottom of that just to finish off just gives it a more of a, a rounded off look to it. We also just take off a little bit of detail, like so. And then afterwards we will shape the bells and then decorate them as well. 
Right, so above here, we have to find, make sure you get the right gouge. Just like so. There we are. Same again. There we go. So we got those bits just carved down into the wood. And afterwards, see, by doing that, it allows us to finish shaping the bell off. And that will be able then to uh, round everything. Just gives it a more fine finish as we're going along. So with this one here, this is a gouge that generally I find is good for the shape. But I find that it's not, it's not the, it's not one that holds its edge quite as long as some of the other ones that we work with. So it was, um, it was sold as a marbles and it's decent steel. But for instance, this one, you get a much keener edge and it holds its edge for a lot longer. There we go. So we're just going to shape that around like so. And that then can be used as the basis. So where we're doing our, where we can do our, our sort of hand sanding from. We shape the bells. There we go. Shaping it all around. And now what I'm going to need is some decent sandpaper, which I seem to be running out of all the time. That's why we've got to sort out those sanding belts and to sand everything. It's a nice, nice stuff. Quite often as well, the bells usually, on most of our designs, we would have it at the top of the love spoon as opposed to the middle. But sometimes when you're making the different ones, it's, it's not possible to put it at the top. So quite often we put bells, like thinking in terms of the, the bell tower. So when you're, you're designing, but it's the same as the dragon. There's symbols that can be added anywhere to the love spoon. There we go. So again, we just, yeah, just shaping that as we go. And that means that we can add a little bit of decoration. Just as well for everyone to know, we haven't uh, given up when it comes to our big spoon that we were working on. That is still in the process, but it's, um, it's something that there's so much work to be done on it. And there's so it's such a huge project for us that we have it we have it out for a little while and then we put it back in and then come back to it again. So it's well on. We've spent a lot of hours working on it, but it's surprising just how much it takes. I was gifted a set of palm tools yesterday. The angle on them is perfect, but the materials quality is my only concern. It's free tools though. I won't complain. Yes, yeah, spot on. Um palm tools. So is that I don't know, is that a palm tool? Um, I'm sure I've uh, come across something sort of similar that would be interested to know. Yeah, what, what's the design with the palm tools? Interesting. Well, as you said, if you're being offered free tools, you can't go wrong with that. Give them a go and see how you get on with them. We're very fortunate. As I said, we've been uh, over the years, we've been given all sorts of different ones. 
Right, now we're getting towards the top of the love spoon. I'll tell you what we haven't done. We haven't done any detail on these bells. There we are. Okay, so. Let's have a little look. Now the first thing I'm going to work out is how many, because for instance, see, if I'm going to do three cuts, then we go right in the middle, but I think we're going to have to do four cuts. So we start slightly to the one side. Same again on the others. So we do one there, and then one just off to the side. So you work out how many, uh, how many little indents you're going to need to do the decorating of the bells, whether it ends up as three or four. Think of an acorn shaped handle, right? Yeah. Sharpening them as we, as we, brilliant. Well, you'll have to, you'll have to let us know how you get on with them. It's like an acorn shape. Interesting. Slightly different carving process. Are they more sort of designed for whittling then? Is it, would it, would they be more suitable for um, handheld carving? So sort of holding it in one hand and carving in the other. Is that what they're more sort of geared towards or? Interesting, huh? So many different types of tools, so many different shapes and styles. Here we are, and let's just cut a little bit of detail out on all of these. Just like so. Right, so we're going to do a little bit of detail then on this twist. And we've got the initials. So again, we're going to get a little bit of depth into it. We're doing all of our stop cuts so we can cut it down into the wood itself. Just like so. There we go. So we're just getting that depth down into, yeah, into the wood itself. And just carving that out. We'll have where that one heart sort of goes behind the other heart. Again, another popular symbol that we probably put on the vast majority of our bespoke spoons is the entwined hearts. So we're just carving that little bit of depth onto into the uh, the initials so they sit in inside that entwined framework somebody actually asked us for um, entwined hearts without the um, entwined hearts without the initials and the problem with that then is if you just do that you've got a big gap in the middle of where you're carving those entwined hearts so what you have to, what I do then is to, um, is to um, put something inside the heart. Because the thing is, you've got that entwined surround. If you don't have the initial inside, there's two big gaps. And what that tends to do is to draw your eye to where the gap is, as opposed to looking at the, the design, looking at the carving um, and looking at the love spoon. So the kind of thing you can do is to put a small heart inside. So you have a surround and a small heart inside just to fill the gap. And again, you can see us just working our way around the outside. There we go, just keep Work in your way. Just like so. One thing we've also been looking at this week, uh, shellac. So we're in need of buying some more shellac. Don't know what everybody else is finding. If you use shellac, we've noticed the price has gone up massively. Uh, I would say yes. 
they would work rather well for holding the pieces you carve, but being from a country, from a country, I do not like to use the word whittle. I'm the carver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, that's something we'd we'd refer to. Um, yeah, it's the name we use, whittling, and um, it's very popular. You see a lot of people because uh, we get asked a lot of the time that people will say to us, "Don't you use gloves?" For um, for the work that we do, we don't use gloves because you lose that sense of touch if you if you've got something between your hands and um, and the carving itself. But um, that's the, the the reason then that they wear gloves is if you're carving like that, you're carving towards your hand. So again, we're doing the stop cuts just to do the uh, tops of the hearts and. We are well on with this particular love spoon now. Nice to see it taking shape and a nice process just carving it all, all out. And you can see at the top there we've marked out because we've got a rose, which I might actually simplify a little bit. And we got a thistle. So that little twist again, that'll go under and over. And I think we'll start doing some work on the thistle. Yeah, we've been asked different questions as well. People ask us about the incarnal um, gouges. So not the ones that we use. That's where they're sort of, um, you get the internal and external angle gouges. Not something that we use a lot ourselves um, we uh, we don't have much use for it but something we, we get asked people ask us for how you sharpen them and so it's, it's basically the reverse of what we demonstrate a lot of the time where normally you would be sharpening on that external angle you have to do the sharpening on the uh, internal angle so uh, that's how it works Right. Now what I'm going to do, yeah, we're just going to carve as far as we can and the top of the thistle, we can start shaping the sort of main part of the thistle. There we are, just into into that edge just like so and then we're going to have to go back the other way as well so let's turn this round in nice there we go and we're working on the it's basically where we've carved up to here in the one direction we now do everything back in the opposite direction You don't use the gloves, but you do buy a lot of super glue. So interesting now, um, yeah, with everyone, different methods for holding. I mean, as you know, we hold in a vice, and that's the, the beauty of doing that is that it keeps your hands well away from the carving. But if you do hand hold to carve, yeah, what systems do you all use for keeping those, those hands safe? Because that's the thing with holding to carve, that I always sort of struggle with the idea of is you are cutting towards that hand so a difficult um, a little bit of a diff difficult thing because if you do make any mistakes if things do slip I mean we, we have situations where you just slip a little bit then un unfortunately the gouge it's heading towards your your hand that's why when people ask us about the, you know, the safety of it, we always say that in many ways it's safer wood carving than, um, say, for instance, using a, a kitchen knife where you're holding something and cutting. With this, we've got those both hands free and they can both control what you're carving. There we are, so... 
we're just shaping that all around and that is just Yolanda she's back from picking the boys up so they've just finished their day in school we had a we had the teacher on the uh, telephone earlier saying that my youngest son he'd he'd bumped his head um, this had never happened before um, he uh, yeah he bumped his head in school and they thought they'd better let us know initially when she was telling me I thought they'd she said he's bumped his head on the wall and my concern was that he'd broken the wall so I thought we were going to have to pay for the damage but he's uh, he's absolutely fine because I know my youngest son he's similar to his daddy where he's quite resilient put it that way probably end up as a rugby player later in life because he's quite a tough a tough little man so thankfully he was absolutely fine and we don't have to pay for any damage to the wall right so we're shaping that we've got that we want that sort of rounded off that almost sort of bulb look the only self I've received that was out in a trip to the hospital were when the projects uh, were in the in a vice. Oh dear, that's not good. Main injury I had from carving was probably a combination of prolonged holding, yeah, and to grip and substituting things, yeah. So it would be numb hands. Also got numb hands sometimes in bike riding. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, I think the war made a full recovery, in fairness. My old woodwork teacher used to drive it into us to keep both hands behind the blade. I watched some YouTube carvers and I cringe. Yeah, spot on. Both hands behind the blade and cut away from yourself. That's the principle we've always worked on. You will see me occasionally lapse in, as I just did then. But uh, as a 99% of the time, yeah, that's what you want both hands behind the blade and cut away from yourself and that's the truth of it the only time that you sh you you will sort of get any sort of, sort of injuries is if you're doing something that you shouldn't really be doing so we're going to shape these hearts and all in all that has been a really nice project to do so for instance there i shouldn't do that i should turn it round in the vise and then cut away but that's a little bit of laziness, not turning it around in the vice. So, again, we're just taking that, just beveling that edge, just giving it a nice finish. Also gets rid of, reduces the amount that we have to, uh, Reduces the amount that we have to take off on the belt sander afterwards. Again, you shouldn't do that bit that I did there. You should turn it round in the vise and cut the other way. And that is basically the only time that you will have a, any sort of injuries. Is if and the only other occasion is if something slips in the vise. Hello, Joe. Thank you for joining us. Cold here to oh, it's. it's here we're not we're not too bad here today but it's cold in the appalachian appalachian mountains north carolina i used to teach first aid for the military we had a cringeworthy video on amputation oh blooming heck well of course see there is a military uh, aspect because woodworkers we can actually um we can actually become uh doctors that's, um, that's the one area that we can get, and that comes from amputations, because of course you had the, the saw doctor, and that was his medical involvement, was, uh... yeah, it is a bit cooler here, and uh, yeah, no, the saw doctor, so you can be a doctor of saws, and that was their involvement in the medicine, they were doing all the amputations, I think that goes back to something like the Napoleonic Wars, so you have a doctor of saws, Don't think you'd have too many volunteers for it now. 
So we're just working our way now, finishing off. There we are. So we're just coming around the top just like so. And what we want to do is to just bevel, bevel these edges. Just around the outside. There we go. And we're going to have to come back the other way as well with that thistle. Because we just need to reshape that a little bit. And the main thing that we got left over is the rose. So all in all, that's a project that is uh, coming together quite nicely. So we're just going to go around that outside, around that surround. Just like so. There we go. It's coming together. And it's always nice when you can see, see things taking shape. Now with the spoon we were referring to as well for recording 2021. Any thoughts how you can uh, how we could have recorded a year like this year? Um, oh, I missed a few there. Let's have a look. I'm in very northwestern corner of North Carolina, next to Tennessee and Virginia. There we are. We got the Carvers from Virginia as well. Uh, there was a BBC comedy on nineteenth-century doctors, quacks. I think it was called. I have the one doctor who claimed to fame was the speed of amputation, accuracy, accuracy be done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, um, yeah, it used to be the, the saw doctor. So you could be a doctor of saws. I think you still can be a doctor of saws, but uh, medical science has moved things on a bit. So I think if I, if you turned up with the, one of the disposable saws now. I think you'd probably get turned away from our A and E. I don't think they'd be too keen on using our abilities. Right, so we're just going to do a little bit of depth, get a little bit more depth into the carving, and we're going to do we'll redo that stock cut. Just go a little bit deeper into the woods. There we are, just like so. That's him. So we're just trying to tidy it up a little bit from where we've done our initial cuts. May have to go a little bit deeper than that afterwards, but we shall see. A lot of that comes down to carving style. Yeah, any thoughts? How are we recording this year? So let's have a little look. So we're just getting a little bit more. We'll have to do the same coming back the other way. And we're just going to take just a bevel that edge as well there. Just like so. Save me turning it around in the vise, we're just going to do that a little bit. And that is most of this spoon done. And we can mark out four our rows. It's a great thing as well with the love spoon, see, is how it can tell stories. Recording this year, it could do the Greek alphabet, yeah. They're going through that, and they are alpha. Is it alpha, beta? They're onto this, what they claim is a new variant out of South Africa. So it's all going to be, re it's all recorded on, on that spoon. The interesting thing about their new variant 
Didn't they nearly cancel the British and Irish Lions tour on the basis of the African variant? So is it a new one or is it the same one? Because if it's the same one, it's not new. It's been there a long time. We've currently got um, a few of the rugby clubs. There's Cardiff Blues. I think they're stuck in South Africa because they can't get out. Let's have a little look here. Right, so with the rows, we start off always by doing that little little piece just like so. And we're gonna work, work around that surround. Yeah, any thoughts on that one? Interested to know. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna simplify it just a little bit because um, the way it is drawn on here is quite a quite a difficult, complex little carving. So we're just going to simplify things. <clears throat> just like so. And what we do is sort of, um, we're working in from the centre and working our way out. So we do our initial circle almost design that you've seen us doing on there and then there we are so we're just going to work our way out as we go so we've done one petal towards the top one towards the bottom now the next thing then we're going to work from these outside petals hmm and we're just going to shape these as we go along. There we are, just in like so. And the idea is to just slightly, that's my, my thought, is to just slightly simplify everything. Not a huge amount, just a little bit. It's just removing a few of the internal petals. Otherwise, the whole thing gets a little bit complex. In some ways, it can get a little bit sort of messy. Some of them I don't think we actually need. There we are. So this one here comes around like so. And in into there. Yeah, so we've got a slightly simpler version of the rows to work from, but it should be just just as effective. For the um, thistle, we're just working at angles there. Um, we're gonna do a few little lines across the center. And then we're going to go back in the opposite direction. And there we are. So it creates almost like a, almost like the impression of a diamond across the thistle. And then a few little lines. Just like so. Just to the top. So you just, as you're going along, shaping it, getting the depth, adding the detail. Same principles, those simple principles of carving. Shape it, get your depth, and then add detail. It's gonna be the same then with our rows. So the main thing with the rows, you've got to get that depth onto it. There we are. So we're going to get what depth that we can get on it. We're just working into those stop cuts, just like so. Shapes 
shaping it, getting any detail that we can. And the same with this one here. The only problem with doing that now, we're going to lose a little bit of our center. So I think I'm going to have to do the center slightly differently. There we are. Sometimes that happens where you just have to adapt what you're doing as you're going along. If it is, then just follow what needs to be done. There we are. I'm missing a gouge. There it is. So we're just going to work into that center. Just like so. Work in and around it. And I think we're going to turn it round in the vise. Right, so again, it's just working into those stop cuts. What we're trying to create is that effect where those petals are just overlapping one another. And we've got that one petal, the next petal. So just work your way in with all the other petals. Just like so. Oh, I can hear the boyo in the background. That's Nico back from school. There we are. And we've got a little bit of detail on that one there. Where we're just going close to that. We just re-establish the stop cut down into the woods. Just like so. So again, we're just working our way into the centre. And we're just trying to get that detail finished off. Thanks, Sid. Just like so. And that is the bulk of the carving finished off on this love spoon. There we go. And I think Thomas the Woodcarver had our spoon for the year. I'll move out the way there. There we go. That's the carving on that one there. Is it sure? Do you wanna do you wanna have a little look with everyone with that? You can point out the alteration that can be made. I'm dropping stuff all over the place. There we are. We'll swap over. And I think he's gonna make a little alteration to the spoon. And I'm gonna nip to the toilet two seconds, did if you wanna okay. show everyone with that. Here we go, folks. Here's the spoon Dave's done. I'm hoping you can see this. Yeah, so the little situation that I've got, I'm going to shellac it. And so I got the shellac ready, but I don't know whether you can see the, I'm trying to hold it up so you can see. My dilemma is that line across there. I don't know whether you can, you can see it. I'm looking at, I'm trying to get it on the, I'm trying to get it in shot for you. As you can see, I'm not much of a cameraman. Ah, I think it's in line there now. It's, it's the line there. It's a minor thing, but when you, when you, when you see it, I really need Dave to show you the, when it's on the wall. And um, you have the same, I'm going to reverse it round, you have the same situation on the top of the spoon. So I've turned it round. There's a bit of a delay that comes, I turned it round, you can see it on there, turn it round. So it is a delay that I see it on, on camera. 
It'd be easier, Dave, if you, if you could pull it back so I can show everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll work as cameraman and you can show everybody. Yeah. If you put it flat on the flat on the device, I'm just going to zoom everybody out two seconds. Okay. And I'll put it on an auto focus for you. Okay, we're on there. That's it. Right, so I can show. Now, as she's now first thing, because what it is today, I was just going to um, put a coat of shellac on, but. What did you did you refer to it? Yeah, I know. See, because because I I do this and and I know that Dan prefers it at a, at a gradual angle, and that's that's fine. Um, and I've just noticed as well, I haven't finished that one off there. Doesn't the, matter though, because um, we can still shellac it. Yeah. So so basically, what what Dan prefers to do is to come down at a gradual angle, um, and it's just a you know it that's it is it's a better finish. So we can change that one over, alter it. And it's it's a small alteration, but ultimately it, it looks. Well, nice I I think it's a nice way for people to see how. So you're gonna, are you going to carve it? Just for people, I just wonder what they felt. Just if anybody felt that had a view about it. Well, I think I think you should do it. It's something they always forget to do. Um, nicely done, but raise hair so from point in design. Some of us might know. Uh, working in tiny workshops, one of the um, so I'm just going through some comments. Petrol pump, yeah. Here, um, is that a line in the grain? Asking. No, it's it's basically where I have. Yeah. Car. It's the line That's across. It. So. So what I would do. Yeah, de demonstrate it. Show it. My. Now this is the difficulty with this spoon now is because it's it's really quite yeah. delicate. Yeah. So I just need to hold it there. Um, that'll so, be that'll be fine. As well, for those of you, did you explain any of the love spoon? No, I haven't right. explained anything. So yeah, you're asking about petrol pump. Basically, here the media manufactured a crisis that there was a fuel shortage. There was no fuel shortage, but all of a sudden they have people queuing outside petrol stations. They've also told people there's going to be no turkey for Christmas, so that's why there's a turkey on there. We got the syringe on there because of the vaccine. There's a lot of controversy around it, different views and things like that. But it's it's an incredible thing, you know, rolling out the vaccine program as they have done. So we got the vaccine on there. Oak leaves. It's mum and dad. It's their fiftieth wedding anniversary. Oak, golden oak is the idea behind that. So you've got oak leaves on there representing nature, but it's also recording their fiftieth anniversary. You've got acorns on there. Four of those acorns represent the four children. And then you've got four more grandchildren. So that's the idea is that you hope that those, those acorns will grow into mighty oaks. My um, thing with this one here, basically, this is always a bit of a pressure getting our spoon done to record the year. So that's what I'm looking to do now is to get this job done. So I've, I'm at the stage with this love spoon where I spent a lot of time then designing, working on it, making it, thinking of the ideas, thinking of how we're going to record this year. And so I'm but, sick of the sight of it. I just want the job job done. But the spoon is sorted done. now. The spoon itself is yeah. sorted. Yeah. Ready yeah. To the finer detail, you find, you find there now, that just takes that line out of the bottom. So instead of my eye now looking at that line, it's taken away and it looks more at the spoon overall. They want to see your shellac in it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the best bit. You ought to do that, Dave. Now go on, you shellac it. I, I've done the carving. It's, it's recording your anniversary on there. Um, yeah, so, so that's, I, I, I'm going to say, that love spoon, and that's quite normal to get to a stage with a love spoon where you're just, you, you're, you're fed up of it. Um, I can see. Even like that, I've just noticed that I haven't done all of the detail. Can you do me a favour? A little bit in there, just, I can see. No, no, no. It's the, it, it's the ease. I haven't put a yeah. line on the ease. Just finish it off. Um, a little bit there? The two E's. One on the one and, and one on the other. Just careful. With them. One there. That's it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's... It's something, originally, see, our plan was to do the big spoon and to record this year through the big spoon. This, um, this, this is now turning it into an art piece, you see, because, like, like you, know, you know, like all the great artists, they, they, they'd have the, um, the, what do you call the, the trainees doing all the graft, and then they'd come in then with, with so, the with so the Thomas the, Wood with the perfection done, bit now look. Thomas the Woodcarver's done four cuts on it and he's claiming it as is. 
see where this thing goes. So yeah, this is I mean, it's great. You see that colour and character coming up in the wood. Um, I'm thinking, did this come from the piece of furniture we bought, or it it did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is what we're working out. We spent we've spent sixty five pounds on this one piece of furniture, and so far, did that come out of it? That come out of it because it had that. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, that came yeah. Out. so we're working out. Basically, the long and short of it is that... This, oh, there's a list over there. This you're... video, right, well, this video will go up on the channel, excuse me, sometime next year. Um, and there will be a video showing the carving of this love spoon. Normally, we do a long video um, showing the carving, but I've done this year, this year, I'm going to do that spoon as a YouTube short. So you'll be able to see the YouTube short showing how that love spoon is hand carved. Um, what we're doing is like a list and tallying up how much we can turn that £65 into. So far, the spoons that we've done on it, we're, we're well on our way to yeah. over £1,000. Yeah, we've just ordered a new pot of shellac. Um, yeah. If you want to you've show got, them... Got new brushes on, haven't you? If you, if you? Yeah, we've got some new brushes on order. If you want to show the shellac, um, it, it's from a fairly local firm. It's from Cardiff, actually, Fiddies. And, um, you know, this is the, you can see how easy it is to apply. Um, we've got to go um, sort of inside everything as well to seal everything. Um, but Dave, Dave will show you the label on the front there. That's all the warnings. Um, there it is. There That's we go. The... That's our shellac. So we've been on the phone to Fiddies. If you're wondering as well why the, why the focus is changing, it's on an auto focus. Okay, so so if I can explain about the shellac, um, we usually put two coats and then decide whether to put a third or not. But you can see how it enhances the um, the wood, um, you know, from that color to that color, just and that's just that's color. just the first coat, and it's so easy because look, I can almost touch it now without without it sticking so it it dries fairly quickly and um it it doesn't get a shine on it I'll just so you, thanks for joining us Aubrey so you you're looking at the wood rather than um the 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 shine like a like a glass well, sort of reflection is, we we've all as well because i know everyone's got different ideas and we we all do different things um and, it, and we're in different we're in different countries we're in different places and there's different preferences so some people prefer a higher more gloss like a varnish yeah. type finish and it depends as well what and how the item is going to be used ourselves we've always had more of a matte style finish I was um, I was going to say about the shellac itself it the the the, the firm we use fiddies you can buy this in two different sizes. You can buy a litre or you can buy the five litre. They used to do a two litre, they no longer do it's that. A bigger size. Um, I'm not but sure. It, I, I think like a ten litre. I, I possibly, but um, the, the problem with it, as it ages, after about six months, I've been told that it tends to go a little bit thicker. Yeah. So um, because we know we're not going to have, you know, we've, we've, you, you saw that was a, what was that? A five litre, wasn't it? Yeah. That was a five, five litre. Well. So um, we're not going to use all of that. But because of the uh, being winter time, uh, and well, over. I mean, for instance, all going well. We hope to myself. We hope to travel to see my wife's family, and then we tend to ease down a little bit. Yeah. For for about three weeks, three weeks a month, yeah. we tend to ease things down a little bit over over the, the, the sort of Christmas time. So shall I give the price so, just to give people ideas? You know, if, if you're purchasing um, the five litre, it's over a hundred pounds. Yeah. Whereas um, we could get the one litre uh, for under 40 pounds. Obviously you work that out. It's, it's a lot more, you're spending about 200, nearly 200 pounds for your uh, one litre five times. Yeah. Um, but because we know it can um, go uh, a little bit sort of um, 
Well, I think, stiff, I think then. the plan is is to we we bought a one liter because we've got one liter of shellac left, so we bought another liter. So two liters should do us. It should take us to the end it of should January. Take us to the end of January, and then we can buy five. There we are, Dave. That's the first coat we, on. We know we can have a good run at things. But I got to do the back. So and, yeah, I tell you what we're gonna do. I tell you what we're gonna do. If you if you have a look on that camera screen, but what we do, let's get right in on it now and just. There you go. So you can see you've got that syringe at the bottom there. You've got the petrol pump because they had like a petrol crisis. However, as well, COP, what are they call it, COP26. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the big, all the big um, fuel companies were there, weren't they? And yeah. they're talking about the energy crisis. And, and, and sorry, they're talking about the environment crisis. Um, and they just opened Shell. You've got a Shell on there, see? And Shell have just opened, I think it's Shell. Um, sorry, it may not be Shell. Um, we don't want to get sued by um, Shell. But one of the big oil companies just opened a new oil field or are looking to open a new oil field up in Scotland. So yeah. it was recording those things as well. Yeah. You've got the turkey. Um, I can't help thinking there's some analogy of turkeys voting for Christmas in, in there. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's something else. There's well, something well else there is a twist turkey. to it, actually, if I could mention, because... The Welsh Assembly at the COP26, right. you know, were sort of were crow, them, crowing the fact that they were one of the, um, they were the only country that signed up to um, not having uh, oil. Yeah. So uh, no or not oil. having, no, no petrol, sorry. Yeah. And, and no oil. Uh, and yet In Milford Haven. By, by, well, by when is the date? It's like another... Five, by 35. Oh, by, by 2035. Yeah. So no, well, but the biggest employer probably in this area um, is um, refine, oil refineries yeah. and bringing liquefied natural gas into our local ports. So my so, question is, where, where were the media that they didn't sort of question well, that basically, little area? Like, what it know? is, is that our government, I'm afraid, in Wales probably don't actually realise that West Wales exists. No, that's the point, <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's how we're recording it. And, there we are. and of course, we've always used these initials on inside the heart on, on the top there, Dave. You know that's what's, a, what's the name of the Shellac supplier again, please? It's Fiddies. F I double D E S. Let's have a look. We will, and we're doing a we're doing another video on this one. There you go. Yeah, we'll that's the way. bottle of um, that's the that's the logo you're looking for. Fiddies Shellac polish. Yeah, and you can buy it. Yeah, one or you can go online. Meters. They got go yeah. On, yeah. You can buy yeah, it online. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, we we got no association with them other than we use the shellac. It's the yeah. same as Hegner. We got yeah. no association with them. That's so, right. Yeah, that's what we do. So, uh, Thank you all again for joining us. So that is that's what we've been doing today. You can see that one there as well. Um, I'm thinking. Should I put some shellac on that one or? Too soon. Yeah, I, I would I would take the paper off first. Too soon. Um, okay. That one there will come up a similar colour to the one that we've just shellacked. I can put a bit in the spoon. Um, yeah, you can see how it's going to come up from from the spoon. You can see um, the lovely grain there. And again, see. I'm I'm sure that Thomas Woodgar will end up doing a little bit of work on this year's spoon. But and that's the nice thing about this shellac. I'm, I'm done with it. <clears throat> you can put that on. Um, dries quite quickly. Uh, and then you can just you need to rub it down then with a with a fine, um, fine that's a, that's a three twenty that is. So um, and some people in terms of sandpapers they go up to over a thousand. And yeah. Like that, but our cells, yeah. um, for me that's like yeah. half the time that feels like rubbing it with yeah. a piece of paper. But yeah. for me, yeah, three twenty. Well, there's his dragon. He's doing a good job. So it's a reasonable afternoon work there for you, Dave. Well done. That's yeah, good. it's it's coming on. Um, it's work in progress. Yeah. Um, so, oh, this yeah. is a nice way we explained about the rose and the thistle. We got three emblems on there. Yeah. Three emblems. Yeah. So it's all it's all on there. That's good. Thank you as always for joining us. Hopefully it's interesting. Hopefully it's useful. Um, as always, any questions or anything, give us a shout. We will. And for for I'm anybody not, new, hopefully you you'll start making love spoons because yeah, it's absolutely. a lovely. Um, I'll just see if we've uh, been enjoyed the afternoon. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Um, uh, to Stephen's, yeah, I want to go and see that most. We're going to all go and watch now. There we are. Everybody, now we're going to go and watch 
latest video for Stephen's 8x6 workshop. If you're not subscribed as well to him, make sure you get across there and subscribe. But I hope you all have a good week and uh, we'll be back. We'll have our usual upload on the Wednesday and um, a short on the Friday. But thanks again for joining us. Have a good week.